This training film guides you through the most common parts of fitting a roof line to a standard domestic property. Fitters develop their own techniques for doing certain jobs, but it is important to follow a number of standard procedures when fitting any job. Always think safety first. The property must be inspected for asbestos materials, which are sometimes found in the soffit board. If you are in any doubt, the local authority should be consulted about removal. Work from a full scaffold system like this one, with kickboards and guardrails in place. The job will be easier and safer, and you can get it done properly. Always allow the correct expansion gaps at joints and corners when joining long sections of PVC fascia and soffit. Fixings should be no more than 600 mm apart for white and 400 mm apart for coloured or foiled profiles. At box ends and joints and corners, Use as few exposed fixings as possible. This makes for a neater finish to the job. The first job is to clear the working area. Push back the second row of tiles. Lift and securely stack the first row to allow access to the fascia, soffit and sarking felt. In most cases, this will reveal that the felt has severed along the top of the fascia and has dropped back, allowing moisture to fall onto the exposed timber work. Here the bird guard has also disintegrated in some places. Here the condition of the felt is quite bad with a number of holes. At least one was a result of birds nesting. Also, watch out for wasps nests. The gutter can now be removed. Refitting the old one would be a false economy. Cut back the damaged felt to a firm edge. Eventually a section of damp course material or rigid PVC will have to be fitted under the cut edge to ensure that any moisture runs over the fascia and into the gutter. The fascia should now be removed. This is a heavy board and can be dangerous with a forest of nails sticking out. If you didn't spot it, that was a near miss. If there was any doubt, the condition of the barge board clearly shows that the timber roof line needed replacement. To get out the soffit on this house, these timber legs attached to the rafters have to be knocked out and the soffit wall plate loosened off. The area below the rafters should be cleaned and refurbished and the rafter feet and other timber work inspected for damage or rot. In this case, the rafters appear to be solid. Installers have a number of techniques for providing a solid and well-aligned set of fixing points for both the fascia and the soffit board. Here we can see that sections of thick cellular PVC board are being fixed to the rafter feet at either end of the run to act as hangers. These pick up the correct size and position of the chosen fascia and soffit board. Some installers use seasoned or treated timber as hangers but whether you use plastic or timber, it is important to set up a string line to check that all hangers in the run will be in line. Each hanger will be set 10 millimeters above the height of the last brick course so that the soffit board can be positioned between the bricks and the hanger. Every rafter foot now has a hanger securely attached ready for the fascia and soffit board. The maximum distance between hanger positions should be 600 mm for white profiles and 400 mm for foiled and coloured profiles. Many installers like to ensure that the soffit is well secured and has no opportunity to rattle under wind load. It can be nailed up into place with plastic headed pins 
or, as in this case, fixed with a screw or pin that will be covered by the return leg of the fascia board to form a secret fix. Measure a section of soffit joint trim and cut to size. Always make soffit and fascia joints between rafters, allowing an 8mm expansion gap between board ends. This is especially important in the case of foiled or dark colours. With the protective film in place, the fascia board is marked with two parallel lines that show where the two 65mm plastic headed nails or screws will go at each rafter foot. This means that when the fascia is fitted to the rafter feet, the run of nail or screw heads will present in a neat line. The nails are only partially inserted in order to allow the film to be removed. Afterwards they are driven fully home. If you make a mistake, be sure to use a timber flat to set your claw hammer against. To join two lengths of fascia, measure and cut a section of joint. Only fix the joint to the end of one board using screws or nails. Be sure to leave an 8mm expansion gap behind the joint when you place the board ends together. The building regulations require that the roof void is ventilated, so it is important to provide ventilation points at the eaves so that moisture doesn't accumulate and cause mould and rot to form on roof timbers. The majority of installations require the equivalent of a continuous 10mm air path as provided here by this slotted soffit board. However, ventilation can be provided over the top of the fascia with this unit. And there's even a combination over fascia ventilator and eaves protection unit that fits under the roofing felt and dresses down into the gutter. Just remember that the height of the fascia board itself has to be reduced by the height of the ventilation unit. Before fixing the fascia protection unit, set up the gutter by determining the position of the running outlet above the downpipe and fix it in place. Next, fix the end gutter bracket to the fascia at the point higher than the outlet. Mark off the intermediate gutter bracket positions at a maximum of 1 meter centers. Where the brackets are top hung, as in this installation, the distance should be 800 millimeters. Set a string line between the end bracket and the outlet, or the nearest bracket to the outlet. Then fit brackets at each mark following the line of the string. Fit the gutter by inserting the rear edge under the clips first and then clipping the front edge into position. Other gutter systems have different clip systems. Fit any joints in the guttering that may be required. Add the next section of gutter and fit the stop ends. With the main gutter profile in place, the overfascia drainage system can be fitted. In this installation, a rigid plastic section is being fitted under the felt and over the fascia to dress down into the gutter. In addition, a bird comb is fitted to stop birds and large insects getting in under these pantiles. Now, any water that accumulates under the tiles will flow back into the gutter. The first row of eaves tiles can now be fitted, ensuring that the bird comb points towards the gutter, followed by the second row. Measure sections of dam pipe to fit the new angles. Fit the sections. And finally fit the main dam pipe. The next job is to renovate the box ends and the barge boards. Strip off the old material back to the gable ladder. 
Unfortunately, on this installation, the gable ladder is short and has to be extended with extra timber sections to make it long enough to support the box end structure. The measurements for the main box end components can now be taken, starting with the front corner, the back corner, the overall depth of the box and the depth and height of the return to the gable end. The main components can be measured, drawn out and cut from one wide board. The top of the section that returns to the gable end can be cut at an angle to make a good fit with the barge board socket, which passes over the top of it. A small notch out of the return leg allows the two boards to nest into each other. The two box end corners can now be measured and cut to size. The back corner section should now be notched out to allow for the gable ladder. So here are the four main components of the box end ready to fit to the new fascia and gable ladder. The box end should be made with as few visible fixings as possible. Here the main board is screwed to the side of the fascia. Checked for level and screwed to the gable ladder. The gable return is fitted and secured into place. Silicon is applied to the corners to keep them firmly in place. A J trim is secured to the gable ladder to retain the gable soffit at the wall. The gable socket is fitted into place and screwed to the ladder at regular intervals. Set the correct angle for the barge board at the apex. Mark the board and cut to suit. Fit the barge board into place and nail it up at regular intervals not exceeding 600 millimeters. Perfect finish.